Shalom. All praises, honor, and glory due to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Racha Kadash. Double honors to the apostles, elders, and the bishops of the Great Millstone who do rule and teach well. Shalom, peace, blessings, salutations as always to the sincere believers, the fellow laborers out there listening to learn and keeping the faith of Yahweh Shai until we are redeemed from our captivity. So it's your brother Azariah. We're going to make this a quick hit, you know, but I want to touch on this eclipse that's coming, which pretty much has been the talk of the Internet. You know, everybody's talking about it. People can't wait till this eclipse come. You know, they're going to be marveling at it. People are going to have these uh, sunglasses on. They're going to be outside looking at the sun, you know, be completely black, you know, not even realizing the significance of what is about to happen. All right, and I want to set it off with this scripture right here in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 1. It says, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Verse 2, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh so cometh as a thief in the night. Verse 3, For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief yeah so this day the great day of the lord okay the the day of vengeance the day that yahweh shah is coming to deliver his redeemed this day is fastly approaching and while this day is fastly approaching, you're seeing things happen all over the earth, signs in the heavens, right? But the whole of the earth outside of the hopefully elect are in gross darkness. Okay, that's why the day of destruction is going to come upon them like a thief in the night. Because they're not watching, you know, they're not being circumspect. Okay, Paul said, you have no need that I write unto you. So he basically saying... In today's term, you know, term of, uh, you know, vernacular, you already know what's going on. You know, you already know. I ain't even got to tell you. You see, because we already know perfectly what time it is. You know what I'm saying? Brother's been watching. Brother's been keeping up with the news and bringing it out. You know, thus saith the Lord. So we understand that it's crunch time. You know, the game is about to be over. You know, but before the game is over, it's going to be a lot of turmoil, a lot of destruction that's going to come before the Lord come back. You know, this is what we've been preparing ourselves for all this time, you know, but dealing with this eclipse, this is going to come on the same day that the plague of darkness struck ancient Egypt. And it says in uh, Second Ezra, the 15th chapter. The Lord said that he would send plagues upon Egypt, which that Egypt that was spoken of in that verse is speaking about modern day America. OK, because this is where the Israelites was taken as captives in slavery, just like we was in ancient Egypt. So the Lord said that I will bring plagues. Matter of fact, let me just get it because I don't even want to butcher it. You know, let's go to second Ezra's. Chapter 15 and 11 says here, well, let me start at verse 10. It says, behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Verse 11, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. You see that? So the same plague that the Lord sent upon ancient Egypt is going to come again today in this modern day Egypt. You see, as before, and will destroy all the land thereof. Verse 12, Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn for their seeds shall fail through the blasting in hell, and with a fearful constellation. Verse 14, woe to the world. 
and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draw nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. Okay, so you get the point. The point is the Lord is bringing the plagues upon this land, man, because, you know, this is the appointed time for these things to come forth. And it also signals to the hopeful elect that we about to get up out of here. You know, our captivity is coming to an end. This world is done. So let me go ahead and play this video. Check it out real quick and we'll be right back. We must be alert this April 8th, 2024, as we could enter the three days of darkness the Bible tells us. On the 8th of April, the world will witness a celestial event that has aroused both fascination and concern, a total solar eclipse, and it is not just any eclipse like the ones we have seen before, as it will be on the same day as the three days of darkness in Egypt. During this phenomenon, the moon will come between the earth and the sun, temporarily obscuring the earth. However, beyond its visual magnificence, this eclipse has stirred up ancient concerns and fears associated with biblical prophecies. In the biblical scriptures, astronomical phenomena are alluded to as warning signs, as the Bible tells us in Joel 2 verse 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. For many, the eclipse this April 8th awakens memories of ancient beliefs about the end times and divine judgment. In the midst of a world full of uncertainty and conflict, the idea that such a celestial event could be a harbinger of cataclysmic events is a powerful reminder of the end times. So there you have it. And it's heavy that this eclipse is coming after the Pesach, you know, after the Passover, a lot of stuff is about to go down like brothers can feel it in the spirit man like we already know what time it is you see but this eclipse is coming on the same day that the uh three days of darkness struck ancient egypt you know and that was a plague unto egypt at that time you understand so we hey man the lord is speaking loud and clear all right it ain't no doubt you know people want to say it's a coincidence no nah, i mean it ain't no coincidence you see everything is going according to as it is written you know which is what the prophets and men of the lord have been telling you okay in this solar eclipse it's going to mark an x across the whole of america and it's going to pass through seven cities with the name of nineveh the one that came in 2017 to pass through seven cities with the name of Salem. Okay, which Salem means peace and is short for Jerusalem. You see? And the cross, the, uh, what do you call it? I guess the, the intersection of the path of the eclipse is going to intersect with the 2017 one in a town called Little Egypt. So these are prophetic signs from the Lord. As a sign that judgment is coming. Okay, more plagues are coming, more death. You know what I'm saying? This is what the scriptures speak about. So we not ignorant, man. Like the Lord is once again speaking loud and clear. You know, and those that follow the voice of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah through the Spirit, we don't even need to tell you, man. Like, if you've been keeping up with the prophets and been keeping up and doing your own due diligence as well, studying to show yourself approved then you can see it yourself. You see? But let me go here to Exodus 10 and verse 21. And it says here, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. So this darkness that came upon ancient Egypt was a darkness that was so thick that you could feel it. You know, and it tells you about, uh, you know, the Egyptians, they were so afraid that they didn't even move for, th for three days because they was afraid. And you, you can't even imagine how terrified that them people was of that darkness. You know, it tells you that, you know, they was, uh, you know, seeing apparitions and they was hearing things, you know, so they was afraid to move. And, you know, no, ain't no doubt about it. You know, uh, the Lord had uh, spirits out there plaguing people, man while that darkness was going on. So the fear level was through the roof during that time. And it's gonna be the same thing 
when this thing happened, man. You see what I'm saying? And Esau been putting reports out there talking about, you know, the, you know, there could be potential cyber attacks, phone networks, internet going to be down. It's going to be blackouts to certain places. This is what the elites, you know, the powers that be have been broadcasting. You know what I'm saying? Then they putting out the National Guard during this eclipse as well. You know, so it's just a lot of weird stuff that uh, the powers that be are doing in this time in line with this solar eclipse. So it just knowing prophecy, knowing what time we in, nothing is by chance. Nothing is a coincidence. You know what I'm saying? Like we know something about to go down, you know, something major about to go down with this whole eclipse, man. You know, but those that are in the good graces of your high we ain't got nothing to you know worry about because we already understand what you know what's what's coming anyway we've already prepared ourselves in the spirit to be ready for what's coming you know so we actually want this thing to come and uh knowing that uh we're at the end you know even christians you know they they talk you know talking heavy about this eclipse but you know, you know what i'm saying they don't even know what's what's really about to happen you see what I'm saying? They think that the Lord about to come deliver them. <laughs> you see, not even knowing that destruction is coming. All right. Salvation is only coming for the elect, man. You see, verse 22 And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven. And there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. And Pharaoh called unto Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord, only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. Okay. So that lets you know what? We about to get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? The Lord about to perform great works, you know, to save his elect. You see? Let's go here. Because like I said, man, you know, a lot of people desire the day of the Lord, you know, not even knowing what end it's going to be for them. You know what I'm saying? You got Edomites talking about they can't wait till who they call Jesus, Jesus the Christ comes back. Right. They they can't wait for sweet Jesus to come back and just, you know, lift them away to heaven and, you know, uh, the rapture and all of that. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's what they waiting on, man. But look, they, they got another thing coming. Okay, they got a rude awakening coming, man. Because look, Babylon, along with the wicked inhabitants of this place, they about to be X'd out. You know, just like how that uh, solar eclipse about to make an X. You see? Amos 5 and 16. It says, Therefore the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord saith thus, wailing, shall be in all streets and they shall say in all the highways alas alas and they shall call the husbandmen to mourning and such as are skillful of lamentation to wailing so the day of the lord man it, you know this thing is not going to be a walk in the park you know what i'm saying it ain't going to be like you're going to be in a candy store and you're just in bliss and you're in folly no this, this see the day of the lord is, is really about vengeance you know, that's what the Lord is coming to do. He's coming to deliver vengeance to his enemies, which who are the Lord's enemies? Two thirds of our people, the heathen nations, you know, with Esau being the top adversary of Yahweh. So the Lord, he coming back to do vengeance to the wicked, man. That's what's about to happen. That's why it's going to be mourning in the streets. That's why it's going to be lamentations, wailing. Weeping and gnashing of teeth, as the scriptures say, right? Verse 18, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? Yeah. So like I said, you got Edomites, these other nations talking about they want the day of the Lord. You know, like they can't wait till sweet Jebus <laughs> come back, man. But to what end is it for you? To what end is the day of the Lord going to be for you? And let's read on. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. You see that? So the day of the Lord, like I said, it's about vengeance. Okay. 
the Lord coming back to chop some heads off. Okay, the Lord coming back to put the heathen down to deliver his chosen people and to set up a righteous kingdom upon the earth. That's what's that's what Yahweh Shah is coming back to do along with the host of heaven. And he's been given the authority to do so by his father Yahweh. Understand that? Verse 19. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. So you know what that means? Nobody going to escape the judgment of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Once this thing come, you it ain't it ain't gonna be no time to let me repent, let me get right, let me you know seek the knowledge of the Lord. No, the time for that is right now. See, because when the Lord come back, it's time for judgment. It ain't gonna be no more talking. That's what people fail to understand. That's what especially two thirds of Jake don't understand. If you understood how close to the Lord was to coming back, you will be moving with a sense of urgency. See, you would be in the spirit of nothing else matters. You see, serving the Lord, having a relationship with Yahweh Bashem that's the most important thing, man. Like this world is passing away. This world is done. So what the hell are you doing trying to live your best life in this world? And it's crazy to me because you got people out here they trying to find a way to make more money. They trying to find a way to get their dream car, get their dream house, putting all their energy into these vain things that really don't mean nothing. All that energy that you putting into worldly things, you should be putting that towards seeking the Lord. But see, for them, again, it's going to be a rude awakening, man. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people are going to be taking it a great number because they put their energy, they put their stock, they trust into the wrong things. You know, that's why when when, you know, affliction does come, we're going to be in a in a in a in a cold spirit. You know, we're not going to feel sorry for these people, man. Because why didn't you seek the Lord while you had the chance, you know? But hey, man, everybody got to work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. Right. So, you know, even brothers in this truth, you know, we are a body. You know what I'm saying? Like brothers fellowship and you know do all of that, but at the same time, in that day, you 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 really gonna be on your own. And it's really about your own personal relationship with the Lord when it all comes down to it. You know what I'm saying? Cause hey, every man gonna be on his own in that day, man. Like your your works are gonna be your works, you know? Another brother can't you know, give you his works or give you his faith, man. No, you got to have that for yourself, you know. Verse 20, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. I hate. It's so like, yeah, we can we can end it right there, you know. So, yeah, the day of the Lord is going to be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it. <laughs> So this is a day that you should fear. You know, this is a day that, you know, when it comes, you want to be on the right side of judgment. You know, you want to be beamed up into the chariots and watching these nations be destroyed. You know what I'm saying? You don't, you don't want to be caught up in the destruction with these heathen, man. You know, you want to be on the good side of judgment, you know, and, and be of those, uh, you know, first fruit spirits to inherit the kingdom. You see? So, yeah, man. Uh, no coincidences. No no happenstance events. This is all going according to the Lord's will. You know, because not, nothing resists the will of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. So, with that, I'm going to go ahead and close this lesson out here. Shalom to the elect.